Well, God bless you all. Let me start this in the same name in which we were joined together on the other side uh, of that door. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, this is a neat opportunity, and many of you, it'll be a follow-up report. And, well, I guess it will be a follow-up report because you, we have been a faithful team together, and we have benefited so much from your love and your support in the mission work. And hopefully you can spread some of this word out to those that weren't able to stay. Uh, this is going to be a two-fold mission update in the sense of Centro Cristiano Hispano, which works with the Hispanic Mission Society of Circuits 1 and 2. And I'm starting here. My part is an introduction. And it's also a little bit of a focus as to what the ministry which you continue to support and you have supported for many years <coughs> continues to do here locally and then how that ministry also will expand into Latin America to the home villages of the people that God has sent here and that we work with and continue to go back and forth. Yolanda will present uh, some special information on that and Tara also will help give a focus to that. So. Uh, I wanted to start with the vision of, of these people. This on the left, you see a team of linguistic uh, students, and the lady in the middle is a professor, uh, Sylvia uh, Ventura Luna. She is uh, a prof part-time professor at Cal State Channel Islands teaching Mixtec 101. And the beautiful thing about how God opens doors is that Yolanda and all of the Velasco family, who are our pastors in Santa Paula and in Oxnard and here in Ventura County, she lives just two mountain ranges away in San Miguel Cuevas from Santiago Naranjas, which is where they're from. So seeing that there are about 80 variants of the language that people don't understand one another perfectly with, this is the Lord's gift. So she actually met with us at Camarillo Library and is helping to train Yolanda how to be our local expert. Yolanda also is a translator. And Yolanda, you speak three variants in your work as you translate her own variant, which is Santiago Naranjas, and another variant from where? San Martin Peras is another pueblo in Oaxaca, and then Guerrero. Guerrero is a state up to the west, and you will, will be able to see that in a minute. And part of the local work that we're doing more as we stopped doing ministry here, I got more involved working with the young people of the country of Javier. This is past, lay pastor Javier right here, and the president of the congregation. They're in an internship. This is Centro Cristiano Oxnard that meets side by side with St. John's. And so they went into a downward trend, but as I've gone over and helped them, we're working more with raising up leaders, and these young women and men uh, are becoming trained in the work of the church and in pastoral theology, believe it or not. And, uh, we just finished up a course with them. Yolanda's taking the course, Tara's taking the course. We're, we're always, as missionaries, very much into lay training. So I just wanted to start with those two pictures because that really gives us a highlight about what is happening here in Ventura County. And the neat thing about this, with just one personal story, you'll see this young lady in a minute, that, uh, in a little, little bit, that she lives here in Ventura County, but every summer she goes down and laughs to her village of Santiago de Ramas, Last summer, she took the bold step to lead Vacation Bible School, right? And uh, we're also working with another sister. Where is Julissa? She's here, and she's here. She's going to be a Spanish teacher, and she's taking Mixtec on herself now because the Mixtec of Yolanda and of many people in the state of Oaxaca, it's not a written language. It's a spoken in the village language. So in Yolanda's village in particular, they use Spanish very much. So it's a challenge for them to take that on, and it's very exciting. Any questions on that? <laughs> you see why I'm astonished? You know, the, the work of the fishermen, which you, and you all have those stories in your life. Don't you have stories? And I, I want you to look at what God's doing in your life, too. As Pastor called us in that wonderful message, which comes from God's Word, is that we really are astonished 
when we see what Jesus is doing, and then also to have that call to go out and be fisher fishermen or fishers, fishermen and fisherwomen of other men and other women. And when we see what God does in their lives, you know, and where can that be? That can be neighbors. That can be at work. That can be people we meet, people that cut our hair and we just happen to share Jesus with them. That's happened to me one time. A gal started crying in the middle of cutting my hair because she'd gone to Las Vegas and lost all sorts of money. And I reminded her, you didn't lose your money. You lost the money that belongs to Las Vegas. And then I got to talk to her about Jesus and it reminded her of some things before. And that's what the call does. And so I'm going to be, begin with this. When the Lord calls us into mission, this is Javier Velasco, who is Yolanda's older brother, and he's really a big pioneer. Is that accurate, Yolanda, to say that Javier has been a big pioneer in bringing the mission work that he found, and I mean, Christ found them here, and now he's taking Christ back to his village. And this is, a, to me, an iconic picture of him walking the missionary road. I wanted to touch two things with Pastor. It's funny, you already, you already touched it. These two texts are just supplemental texts to what, what, what were our lessons today. When God calls us into mission, what does he say to us? He says things like this. I want to come over here. Can you read this with me? This goes way back into Genesis. And to Abraham, the father of many nations, but his name was still Abram, the father of nations. It wasn't many yet. But what did, what did he say? Can you read that with me? The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. Messianic. Messianic promise. Messianic call. That is Jesus right there. Through, through, through that line. Through those families descended from Abraham. Our Savior. Our missionary. Lord Jesus came into the world. And he, Lord says things like that to us. And here's what Jesus himself said. Can you read this with me also? Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We have a promise. And we have authority. And we may respond like Peter at times. How am I going to do this, Lord, in the sinner? I see you and I see your perfection. I see what you do, but wow. Unlimited. But then Jesus' word comes to us time and again. All authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Go. Go and make disciples of all nations. And that's the work that we're doing. And then he gives us the greatest promise of all. It's not a, it's not a hard law thing. He says, I am surely with you. How much? How often? All. Until when? Until 2020 rolls around, until uh, the very end of the age, and then into all of eternity, our Lord is with us because this is His work. I've seen that time has gone by, so I'm not going to take the time to do this uh, song that I had. We'll just leave that for next time. We always like to sing. I don't think we have time to do that. Uh, do all of you know where Oaxaca is? I wanted to take a moment to point it out. You see, uh, here's Baja California. This is De Sur. This is Mazatlan, Puerto Vallarta, very popular places. You all probably have heard where Acapulco is, okay? Acapulco is in the state of Guerrero, which is the dialect or variant that Yolanda speaks. I don't know, do they still speak Mixtec over towards the coast, Yolanda? Not really. Not really. So it's more up in the mountains. 
Uh, this is the mountainous area, and, and what, what's happening in Oaxaca is this area was all part of what was called in the past the Otomangue Empire. Can you say that with me, Otomangue? Otomangue. And Otomangue was then conquered by who were who are the uh, Mesoamericans that dominated this area in the past? Who were they? History lesson. They were the Aztecs. Who were the ones that were conquered and ruling in this area? They were the Mayans. Thank you. So it, it wasn't the Mayans that expanded west across this area. It was these folks that came down into the valley of Oaxaca and conquered that area. And then in their conquering of that, they basically had that Otomangue Empire was dissolved. And seeing that it is such a heavy mountainous region, which you'll see in a minute, that the languages kind of morphed into the difference between, okay, how do you say thank you in Spanish? How do you say thank you in Portuguese? Obrigado. Obrigado. How do you say I am obliged to you in Spanish? Estoy obligado. Obligado becomes obrigado. It doesn't mean obligated anymore. It means thank you, which in English we use much obliged. <laughs> so this is what happens to languages. So we see that. And uh, in spite of all that, uh, Oaxaca was developed as a state in the Federation of Mexico. And now you see a current map from where Yolanda is from and her family. This is called Huxlawaka, which is right here. And their village, that arrow isn't really right, their village is a little bit to the south of Huxlawaka. Can you say Huxlawaka? Huxlawaka. So uh, there's an, I met some Bible translators that have translated the New Testament, and I have it, in Mixtec of Silacayopa. But it's different. For example, to say, God said in Silacayopan, they will say, correct me, a lot of my pronunciation is terrible sometimes. Yo, Yoshi, uh, oh, Nakachi, 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 Nyoshi, Nakachi. But you guys say, Ikachi, right? They say, and that's past tense. So, so in one village, they'll say, Nakachi, and another village, they'll say, Ikachi, but the verb, Kachi, which means to say or to tell, uh, remains. And so that's part of the fun that we get to deal with, okay? But why is it that way? It's because this is a heavy mountainous area. Mm -hmm. And here's just one picture of the typical geography. Oh, wow. Mixtec, for example, is an Aztec name for the people here. The language that Yolanda speaks according to her own people is called Sa'andavi. Sa'a means lengua, right? Tongue. Dabi means humble or poor. So they refer to their language as uh, humble, humble language, humble word. Uh, other villages call their language tu'un sabi. Tu, uh, tu'un means word or language, but sabi means rain. So it means the language of the rain to some of the Oaxacan people, but the Mixtecs call it I mean, the, the Aztecs, when they came in, they called it Mixtec, because that means language of the people of the rain, in Aztec. The Aztecs spoke what language? Nahuatl. Nahuatl. Today, it's called Nahuatl. The descendant language from the Aztec people is called Nahuatl. But in the, in the past, it was called Nahuatl. Like, who, what's the name of the feathered serpent that everybody knows, the god of the Aztecs? Quetzal, Quatl. Right? It was a glottal click, so it's, it's a lot of fun stuff. So that's my introduction, and now we're going to move into our dear missionary ladies presenting to us a picture. This is uh, not Javier, but the other pastor, Marcelino Velasco, who is one of our Lutheran Church Missouri Synod pastors over in Santa Paula. We're going to be going over to having a pastor's meeting at his church this Tuesday. Right, Pastor? Right yeah. Over there? Yeah. And in his last trip, which was in November, uh, he went down and had, I think, his wife take a picture of him up on the road looking down and see in his mission field, we're going to bring Christ to our village. And that's the vision of 
what God, uh, what the Lord has done. So uh, Jesus said to them, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed, and that's really the story of this river valley. There's a river that runs through this place called the Rio Copala, right? And right along the Copala River is the town of Santiago Naranjas, and that's what the Velasco family, especially the pioneer missionary Javier, and also his brother Marcelino and Yolanda's effort is to share God's word of new life. So their ministry is called uh, Centro Vida Nueva. And what does that look like? Uh, our mission delivers the love of God to the people. This is Pastor Marcelino visiting homes when he goes down there uh, and, and praying for people that don't know the truth of Christ. There's polarity. There are two uh, churches in town. One of them is Roman Catholic, and that's the biggest church. And then the other one is uh, evangelical, and they tend to be more polarized, and the evangelicals don't. If, if they talk to a Roman Catholic person, and the Roman Catholic person doesn't immediately or soon accept uh, their version of the gospel, then the evangelicals kind of go, kind of ignore them, and so that creates a polarity. The, I've noticed very clearly that the Velasco family is dedicated to just keep loving people regardless, and to continue ministering to people. So that's what Pastor Marcelino does in his visitation, and also his wife. Tara, would you like to comment on, on the next one? I'd, I'd like to hear you do um, this too, and we'll move through this. So Mar we'll this. Marcelino's wife is Guadalupe, and she has the sweetest heart for everybody. But she definitely has a sweetheart for the seniors of the community. They're neglected, nobody visits them, nobody helps them, um, even their family doesn't come and do anything for them. So she, um, every time she goes, she brings, you know, shawls or blankets for the women. And she realized a lot of them needed glasses. So she started collecting just used, either reading glasses or for distance. And the last time she went, they brought, uh, maybe there's another picture coming up, I think 80 pairs of glasses and they were all gone. They went, you know, everywhere they went, they would share glasses with people. So this lady's just trying them on to see if they'll, they'll work. And um, Look at the okay, the lady on the left is in her kitchen. That's her kitchen. And at the very bottom of the picture is a rolled up blanket that somebody brought it, bought here at Sears or Pennies. And, and they brought and presented it to this lady. And she's thanking you. She's thanking everybody here that is sharing with her. <coughs> and on the right, the children, um, Marilyn Gregory, who's a member of the church in Oxnard, or the church in Oxnard, collected school supplies and stickers and pencils, and you guys did too. So they took them down and they shared them, and they wrote a message saying, Hermana Marilyn, Sister Marilyn, thank you for your love for us. So these children are thanking everybody. They're wearing private t-shirts. Yeah, can you see in the back with <laughs> <little> private t-shirts? <laughs> Which is cool, and they all got like, like Bible studies during the whole week that when the people are down in, in the yoga, and I think this was Javier. This Mondo was Javier leading. We're working. I'm going to take this next one over. This involves linguistics, and this is the kind of work Yolanda and I have been doing. Without Yolanda, I couldn't do any of this, but Yolanda and I have a challenge because Mixtec is a tonal language, so you see all of those marks over things. Yolanda, could you say something uh, to the people to just to let them hear uh, the Mixtec language, like a greeting or something? Um. Meaning? Um, I said uh, thank you so much for opening the door and open your heart and you're receiving me here with you. So you can hear it's tonal and, and uh, some words, for example, if you don't pronounce the tone right, it, uh, it has a completely different meaning, so you have to be careful. It, it's similar to, Ch to Chinese and in the, in, in, in the, the tonal differences. So we're spending a lot of time working, but also our mission builds upon the evangelism that others have done before us in Oaxaca. These are some materials that I have which are bilingual Spanish mixtec materials, as I said, from the village of Silacayopan, which is a different variant, but it's 65% intelligible, and most of the people do not read or write mixtec. They're taught in the school system Spanish. So it would be similar in an analogy, if you know anything about Brit Britain and Scotland, it would be like the 
the kind of cultural invasion of the English up into Scotland and forbidding them to wear their kilts and to play their bagpipes type of a thing. It was that kind of thing, and you don't talk in Gaelic anymore because you need to speak the king's proper English. That's pretty much a very similar situation that has happened here in the Americas. However, as I study Meekstek, I'm seeing it as a very well thought out linguistic language. I'm, I'm really impressed by what I'm learning. I'm not a great linguist, but I'm becoming one at the age of 63. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the pastor this morning. I never know what language he's going to wake up speaking. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, Koreans in there, too. So. Uh, my, my son has moved back at home, and he says, I hear him through the wall for trying <laughs> to pronounce me instead. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Terry, you want to, want to take this over? Then Yolanda is going to be able to speak. So let me introduce Yolanda. Um, probably the last time we came here, Javier was with us. Um, Marcelino has been able to go to some of the churches and present. Um, but we realized we needed to organize a little bit more and get a bigger team because Javier was doing an awful lot and we were trying to help. So we asked their sister Yolanda if she would consider joining us. And this happened. We made a presentation at the church in Goleta. And two of their members decided they wanted to, members of the church in Goleta, wanted to be on our team and help. One is a dentist, and he wants to go down and build a dental clinic, and we already have approval for that. We'll tell you more about that. And the other is the president of their congregation. Yeah, let me show the picture. Okay. Right now, that's and, the next slide. Okay, so that's Dr. Whip on the left, left, and Carol is right next to him. Carol is the, some of you might know her. She used to work for our district president, Carol Stoop. So she decided she wanted to go and she wanted to learn Spanish. So they went right away in May, and this is where I'm going to let Yolanda share. So we formed the team and had Yolanda come on board, and she went with them. And why don't I let you share what happened in May and your visit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I want to thank you to the Russell's family, the pastor family, um, the Russians family, um, because they, um, when Mr. Clara invited me on me to go with our team, I didn't know what I was supposed to do because to me it was new. I'm, I am a member of Santa Paula, the Church of Santa Paula, where my brother Marcelino is a pastor. So um, I have heard about the mission, but I didn't know how to do things in a missionary team. So when I became part of the team, so I supposed to go with them to um, to guide them because my dad is uh, the one is on the side and the right side. So uh, Doctor Eric and um, Sister Carol, so they don't know um, this part of Mexico. Probably they. They went somewhere else in Mexico, but not Oaxaca. Mm -hmm. So I supposed to guide them, but uh, it was surprised. They surprised me that Sister Carol had been trouble many part of the world, and so she knows. She guided me. She guided me <laughs> in the airport and to, to go to San Diego de Aranja. So I was like, oh, so I I am supposed to guide you, but you know more than me. And she was laughing. She goes, yeah. So, yeah, and the other thing, it was my concern because uh, Dr. Eric, um, he has a diet to follow, so I think I don't, I don't remember what kind of diet he is. Yeah. yeah, so I didn't know, and he, I, I asked um, Tara to ask him what to take care of, not to eat, because I don't know this kind of diet, right? So um, he told me, just be careful with this, and this can get, they gave me a list. So I was taking care of him, and what are you eating? What are you gonna, you're gonna eat? So he ended eating everything. He was eating tamales, he was eating pozole, mole, all Mexico, Oaxaca, food. So he was fine, so everything was surprising. So it was very uh, wonderful to be part of this team. So we went to San Diego and to the team because he wants to be um, part of the team. He wants to volunteer to go two times per year for um, dental services, free dental services for the community. So we took a picture, it says El Picamuelas. So this is a little store um, and they sell 
a bunch of candy. <laughs> Candies and a bowl or something else. So, and then maybe it's a picamuelas because they, the specialty of them is to damage the vessel. The 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 so, cabinet store, that's what I call it. To make cabinets. So he said, okay, I'm going to against the picamuelas. So he is going to go to work with uh, with the community to do um, for the, if people need help with them from the kids especially. So we went to um, to the leaders of Santiago Naranja. This is the so, municipal headquarters of, some, of their village. Aren't they? Yeah. Cool, cool building, huh? Mm -hmm. So we went over there because uh, Dr. Eric uh, told us that he wants the community to meet them, to meet us, to meet him, and to know what is the reason that he, uh, he is there. Because he goes, I don't want to wait to see me that I'm a stranger here and who is this person? So he, he goes, we need to go and present uh, the reason why we are here. So we went to the, to the leaders and um, we told them uh, what is the mission and he, he uh, ex, how do you say, doesn't know. Ex people. Well, he explained, yeah. he presented. He, he presented. Why am I speaking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to the leader, and they were so happy. They uh, yeah. they agreed, they uh, gave the permission, they granted the permission to to go to, um, to do this mission over there. So they were so happy. So we have this agreement and uh, with us. and. Dr. Eric, so it was more uh, excited to see this permission, and we are working on um, on that in the building. We are working how yeah. he's going to have his uh, office, his uh, staffs, and everything. So, so I'm going to take you to a picture of the building right now. Yeah, so I think it's even higher than this now. Yeah, it's higher than this. Yeah, so this is a building. It's pretty big. It's so big let me explain to you real quick, Yolanda. Uh, took a lot of work to get the foundation work done because it's next to a river. So they took into account all of that and the drainage and everything, you know, so they laid a really decent foundation has been laid. This is the base of the foundation. These are called tabicones. Can you say that? Tabicones? Tabicones. Uh, much more solid than cinder blocks. These are called castillos, which Castillo, Fuerte es nuestro Dios. Definitely, that's a mighty fortress. Right. So these are called castles. So they, they connect the uh, the blocks to the castles by means of rebar enforced concrete pour all the way around the building. I, I one time had a, a brother from one of our churches say, oh, you know, that Mexican concrete isn't very good. I don't think, you know, that it's going to be built for well, you haven't been down there, brother. <laughs> These people have been building buildings down there. Not all, not all of them, okay? There are exceptions, but most of these well-constructed buildings, they hold up under, underneath the tremors and stuff. It's a lot of the modern work. So this is, this is a road up there. Yolanda, perdón, comentario. This is a road that actually goes up the mountain to another village. Is that Yucunicoco? There's another village up there, which how far is not too far away? Cuánto tiempo toma para llegar? Probably 45 minutes. 45 minutes to go up there to that village, and so there's opportunity there. But there are other villages down the main road. The main road runs right next to this church, which is the main road that some of the immigrants from Guatemala would come up through this area. So. Uh, it's, it, this ministry has some real possibilities for expansion. Uh, pretty exciting. Thank you, Yolanda. I wanted to say this. Uh, this is a very powerful picture. Yolanda puede hablar de ese día. Están orando en frente del edificio. Yeah. So we went to the, um, to the land where the building is. And then uh, one person was already there, like waiting and like exciting the building to finish and to start. <laughs> this, this guy right here. This was a man. I'm was, sorry, you can't see him over there, but there's a there's oh, a, oh, a yeah, little fellow okay. right there. So yeah, because um, uh, Doctor Eric uh, wants <coughs> and Carol, they want us to have a service in there. So um, the family, 
the other family is probably a dog, um, Pastor Ben is going to talk about the other family who is in San Diego and I'm just helping us out. So we went over there and we prayed, we had a little um, uh, prayer over there and then that person, the one who, was, who is waiting, uh, what's going to happen over there. So he excited to be part of this, um, be a member of this uh, church or this team. So we were praying over there in the building. Um, and then, um, uh, well, this is the people. Oops, I did that wrong. Yeah, so I want to go and then with this part, uh, my brothers. Um, I am part of, of this missionary because I am one of the fish who were the, um, that the pastor was talking today about to catch the fishes. So, um, Pastor Dennis and Tara, with this missionary. Um, in 1995, I came in from Oaxaca, from San Diego Naranjas. So it's when the pastor that is was throwing his net and forming in it. <laughs> and then I was one of the fish who came in that net. So after me, all my family, Pastor Marcelino and Pastor uh, the Javier, and all my family come to Jesus. So this is a wonderful thing what God God made and uh, had made in my life and my family. <clears throat> so we want to be prepared to bring the news, to bring the gospel um, as we uh, receive from God, we want to give to our town. So that's why we are here. It's, to me, it's a challenge because um, I don't know too many things and I'm learning more English and faster and now we are learning to write um, a mixteco and everything. So You're very humble. <laughs> so, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much, Pastor, for opening the door for us to do this presentation. I really appreciate that, and God bless you. Amen. Amen. So, I want to go back to something. This this man, this missionary right here, Tara, and I'm going to turn it over to you real quick. We've got about 10 minutes more, Pastor? 11, 11.40? Yeah. Uh, this man, oldest, he's the old, El Es Mayor, right? He's the oldest brother of the family. He's a missionary because of that woman sitting right there. Because Yolanda wouldn't talk about herself, but I have to as, as her missionary pastor. I got to know Yolanda through her aunts. I got to know her aunts simply by reaching out to children in the neighborhood. As many of you well know, we would go out to the parks. We, the, the Lord told us very specifically in a prayer time with a good prayer buddy I had. We met every Wednesday morning and we prayed and we would do prayer walks around the neighborhood, much like this neighborhood behind you with the park in the middle of it. And we prayed over the neighborhood and, and we asked the Lord, Lord, what would you want us to do? How would we do that? And it was in that prayer time that my friend Scott came out of the bathroom, looked down the, the hall and he saw uh, a car parked right at the end of the hall and it said Luke 5.9. He came back in, he got his Bible, so Luke 5, 9, and we read the story we just heard today. And it was Jesus telling us basically to cast our nets on the other side. And we had been doing some work in that community, but it clicked with us. We're going to start casting our nets. And so our net was this big, what do you call them, carpa? What do you call those? A tent. You know those tents that would go out to the park and we would do pancake breakfast and we would invite all of the kids from the neighborhood to come out and would have... Uh, kind of vacation Bible school, sometimes we'd get 150 kids. There were summers that we did that. Well, it was in this process that also Yolanda came to our church and she prayed for her brothers who were involved in challenges in their lives. But they began to come too, and over time, they got involved in the ministry, which was food pantry ministry and reaching out to the community, as you all well know, and as we've done before, you know, with the bagging up of all the food in this very room. Very exciting things. And, and, and sometimes you never know how far is this ministry work that we're doing, this response, going to take, going to extend. We don't know, but, but here it is now in a village that deeply needs the, the pure gospel. Not us, and, and I'm going to end with this myself, but, but please understand this. I think we do need to understand this and pray for this. Roman Catholicism in Latin America is not essentially as Roman Catholicism in the United States of America. It's much more 
syncretistic with pagan elements, with old world paganistic concepts. And there's, there's great paganism that still is involved in these villages. right? Much idolatry, much witchcraft that is tolerated and allowed right in with Roman Catholicism. Now on the other side of that, the gospel has come through missionaries and the evangelical church has grown significantly. But you get a polar swing to where the evangelical church becomes Pentecostally legalistic. It overemphasizes, what did we hear today? Speaking in tongues, and they're not known tongues, they're angelic tongues or tongues that are fabricated in an emotional experience. And so you see this polar polarity, but in the meantime, God raises up that remnant that was promised, right, in Isaiah, that remnant people. And, and, and those are people that just by God's grace were based on His Word. Say this word with me, and I'm going to be quiet after this. It's called tukun, tukun yoshi. Tukun yoshi. Tukun, put a pause in the middle of the tukun, tukun, tukun yoshi. And that means the Word of God with Yolanda's people. Isn't that a powerful term? Is when I say that term, sometimes I'm preaching in Spanish and I can say it a little bit in Mixtec and I see people's faces go, Pastor speaking in our heart language. <laughs> and what a thrill that after all these years I can do it in Spanish and now I'm doing it in another language, so I'm th three languages down the process. What a blessing. Tara, would you like to lead us? And, and, and this is what's going to happen now. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not what I wanted to say. <laughs> I wanted to show the application of the ministry here in Ventura County also. How, how what happens there affects here, and what happens here affects there. And it's a cohesive mission work. And I want you all to understand that, that it's not just, oh, our prayers or our support's going down, way down to Mexico, and we don't really see what's, what that is. But it, it is interrelated, as you well see, Yolanda's family, her daughter, now one of her daughters now lives in Mexico, another daughter is, is a nurse now, and, and so we're working with all of these families, and God's doing great things through many families, not just the Velasco family, but other families, so go ahead, Tara. So the connection here on this picture is Coral, her name is Coral, Coral, and she's the one that Dennis showed you earlier, where she is in our Bible study, she's learning how to... Um, lead Bible studies. Um, I have actually trained her to be a Sunday school teacher at the Oxnard Church, and here she is. She's, she was scared to death, but she led a vacation Bible school last mm -hmm. summer. And the kids came. It rained every day, but they came every day. They were so excited. Do you have another one? Well, I'm just good. And this is Lupe sharing... Um, That's Pastor Marcelino's wife. That she's might even be baby clothes. I think she's sharing there. They, Marcelino tells us when they get there, they don't ask for Pastor Marcelino. They say, where's Lupe? Where's Lupe? Everyone wants to see Lupe. <laughs> Show me your next few, and then I can. Yeah, they're they're going to be right here. They're lining up right there. So okay. All right. So um, Lupe is sharing with Omar. He's the one that she was referring to a minute ago. This is the family that lives there and is kind of our contact people because our guys only go there every few months. So right now, Omar and his family were training. This was a laptop that was shared so we can train them in our seance By the classes. way, it was donated from a member of your congregation yes. to the ministry. Down we can't there. Say this, is real, this is a real learning tool. This was a blessing. Uh, it keeps a, it's keeping us connected and putting resources. God's word. A computer is the Tukunyoshi uh, apparatus, a tool that we're using down there. It's very exciting. So please continue to pray, not only for our team, please, 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 but for Omar and his family. His daughter has an ovarian cyst, and I think just had surgery a day or two ago, so please pray for them. Um, this is Lupe again visiting some of the families and sharing with the seniors, sharing food. This fellow has been very sick. There's so many stories with every single picture you see here about people that Jesus cares so deeply about. And just like we praise God that, that Lupe and Yolanda and the family, they go out and they visit the seniors, the older couples that really don't have support. It's a very, very, it's a beautiful community, beautiful mountains and such, but economically it's extremely depressed. And the Mexican government of the state, for example, they don't really uh, invest in a lot of the villages yet. 
there's a, a fair amount of corruption to where investment goes to where favors are done for political leaders. As we know, that happens here in the States, but it happens a lot in Latin America also. And uh, so it's really a wonderful thing to see, uh, especially Lupe's heart with that. But then we just have two more here, Tony. Yeah, so you may be wondering, go ahead to the next one. You may be wondering what you can do. Um, and I think last time we talked about this too. So um, any donations that you have, we would love to take down there. It has to be small things. So again, eyeglasses. Um, a lot of churches actually sent me this as the, the winner. They give me bags and bags of eyeglasses every time we see them. Um, so if you guys have used eyeglasses, um, we even get it from an eye doctor here who doesn't know what else to do with them actually here <laughs> in Moore Park. He gives them to us too. Um, so eyeglasses, school supplies, always. Um, Javier's going in two weeks. If there's anything you have that quickly, you know, give me a call. If not, uh, probably May, Dr. Wick will go again. Um, Javier, when he goes in two weeks, he's actually getting bids on the windows and the doors, tables, chairs, and new uh, dental chair because the one that we had donated is too heavy to transport down there. <laughs> it's too basic um, time. It's not practical to take it down there. Yeah. And then um, blankets and sweaters, as you saw with the elderly, are like baby. You know how some of the LW mail groups used to do the layouts, which were the, the baby blanket with like diapers and different things inside? As long as they're small, they can take those also. And Bibles. We have not sent a shipment of Bibles down there yet, but we will be. What kind of um, In Spanish, and it can be, you know, just a paperback. Uh, New Testament's okay or the whole Bible. And what's the version? Probably. New International Version is used commonly in uh, Spanish. It's called Nueva Versión Internacional, so it would be not NIV, but it would be NVI, Spanish yeah. version NVI. Same letters, just in a different way. I do have a list here, too, if you want it, of the things that we're collecting. Right, and um, we can get some written information mm -hmm. out, which we should, should, should yes. get that more happening. So. In fact, our next newsletter, if you're not on our newsletter list, um, give me your email address, and I'll make sure you're on it. Our next newsletter will come out as soon as Javier gets back, so in March, the end of March, and it will probably list a lot of these things. Some people have been asking if they want to donate per window or per door, and so that's why he's going to get figures on all. Um, the last thing I wanted to share was besides the Sunday school teachers that we're training here that are going down to Vacation Bible School, we've also been doing with our youth here um, a nutrition and fitness program. We're working on a grant, and so we've been teaching our kids about nutrition and exercise. And in two weeks, we're starting a senior program, and we have a grant for this. Um, and this is what I'm talking about in Oxnard, but it, it will go down to Oaxaca too, where we're going to be bringing them once a month, and these are seniors either in our church or in our community in Oxnard, a small hot meal, fruits and vegetables, and some other canned goods. We're going to be bagging some rice and beans. You guys know where that's coming from? I guess there's uh, uh, some extra equipment that's heading our way, if you all know about that. Remember the day we got together and we bagged all the rice and beans? That's headed our way. So we're going to be bagging rice and beans and sharing with the seniors in our community, but this is also a program we want to duplicate in Oaxaca. So um, just if you could pray for all of those wonderful things, um, we appreciate it. If you have any questions, I will definitely leave you guys the list of things that we're collecting now. But then in our next newsletter, we'll have any updates on that. Um, if you have questions, but Dennis wants me to show you real quick the last picture. Um, we mentioned we just started with Javier and Marcelino and us, and then Yolanda came on board in May, and we got Dr. Whip and Carol. Well, in August, we invited certain family members of the Velasco family, and now our team is about 20. So these are all of our leaders, including the kids. And if you have a heart to join that team, you can see past, there's Pastor Corey and his wife from St. John's. If you have a heart to be involved in what we're doing here in this county, or also here in this county and extended down into Oaxaca, we invite you and we will tell you when we have our meetings and you can become a member of this mission team just to be a support. Uh, prayer is really, really important. So, yeah. Tara, are you done? That's it. Now, Thank I wanted you. to ask, Pastor, would you like to lead us in a word of prayer? Yeah, yeah, let's We pray. went over a little bit, but oh, no. thanks for your patience. Good here. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we pray? Um, Lord, we're so thankful uh, for this time as we gather here together to hear the report uh, from Centro Cristiano Hispano. We're thankful for Pastor Dennis, for Tara, for Yolanda, for uh, Pastor Marcelino, and all those who are involved in this mission. Lord, bless their efforts. Uh, lead them by your spirit. Open the doors. 
uh, so that your word may uh, be planted, watered, and, and it may grow by your grace. Uh, bless them and keep them away from any harm and danger. Grant them your safety, O Lord. And, and we're just thankful for the opportunity uh, to be here today to know that uh, you are working um, through all things and that by the power of your word uh, you continue to grow uh, and, and cast this net uh, that continues to net more and more people uh, to hear your life-saving message. Uh, bless, uh, bless, uh, bless all of us this day and you know, we continue to see this as our vision as we continue to move forward. But for all these things we are thankful. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being dead casters. <laughs>